Beautiful. Do you want to go dirty? Here we go. There we go. John. Digital John. I didn't realize I had the dirty channel quite as loud as I did there. <laughs> okay, welcome back to Anderson's TVs. Before I get shot, please like and subscribe. Uh, use the timestamps if you think this is boring and there might be something more interesting in the future. Uh, or buy some t shirts. Thank you. Um, the Ox Stomp. Yes. Mr. John. This little device over here uh, has ended up in a few studios around the world, more than a few. As. Two or three years ago, uh, the very clever people at Universal Audio decided they want to get into the world of guitar stuff, mm. and they invented um, an attenuator. So plug your valve amplifier into it, turn it up super, super loud, uh, but then control the volume either you know into the speaker cabinet or DI straight into a mixing desk or front of house and apply some speaker sort of cabinet miking emulation. Post effects, all of that, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But... But, 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 the clever people at Universal Audio went, we don't want to use impulse responses like everyone else is using. Oh, no, 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 no. We're going to invent our own thing. We're going to use our own proprietary modeling technology to model hmm. what lots of different guitar amps, cabinets, and microphones might yeah. sound like. Emulations is, I think, the word they use. Yeah. Indeedy. So, uh, to this day, Ox has kind of gone almost on a different path to most most other brands. So um, we're going to go through a new pedal today called the Ox Stomp, which is the emulation part of the Ox. So no attenuation going on here. You can't plug your speaker output into this. Yeah, don't do like that. that. Don't do that. That would be bad. Uh, but what you can do is use it at the end of a pedal board or with something like the Jack here, which is a little tube preamplifier. Um, so yeah, just imagine having your pedal board here into an ox stomp into your DI or yeah. front of house. There's a free app. If you're familiar with any of the Universal Audio FX pedals, you'll know that they've got these uh, apps that you can control lots of the features on here. Uh, the one for ox stomp essentially has a bucket load of preset um, emulations. Mm. And you get little descriptions. They're all sorted into... Um, size of speaker so starts with the 1 by 10 cabs at the top if you go all the way to the bottom uh, you'll get to your 4 by 12 cabs down here they each have a very brief description as to sort of you know what is it uh, what microphones have been used to capture it uh, you can see this for the love of Steve is the one that I'm using uh, and if I want to go into it I press the edit button here and you can actually see now what it is again just you're a you're very familiar with loading IRs, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Probably. Have you created your own IRs? I've never actually created them. I've just got my go-tos. Yeah. How do you, What appealed to me about the Ox when I first plugged into it was I wasn't instantly met with, here's 10,000 IRs, which one would you like? Which right. is the sort of the two notes experience mm -hmm. that I've had of just, you know, all of a sudden you've got this endless amount of IRs, everybody around the world making them. Mm -hmm. Universal Audio, I think it was James Santiago is the um, designer that they use, very well-known designer. He just went, I'm going to pick my favorite cabs. I'm going to mic them with my favorite mics. I'm not going to give you the option to start, you know, moving the mic around the room and everything. I'm just going to yeah. put it where I like it. And that's what you're going to get. Mm -hmm. So you can very, very quickly audition like three or four, four by 12 cabs and go, oh yeah, that's the sound I like without want. worrying that you know you might have missed something because there's like 10 million other different ones hmm. um so let's just basically go through some of the some of the settings that are on here we've, we've chosen a, a jack because it's got a clean and a dirty sound uh, and also uh, all of the um victory v4 preamps at the moment are on a special offer at 299 pounds down from 449 pounds so right i'm going right to the beginning with a clean sound um, some, I'm not going to go through every single one. I'm just going to start here with a, um, a one by 12 sound. Here we go. I'm 
I'm literally, I, I haven't auditioned all these myself yet, so I apologize if I pull out some terrible sounding ones, but here we go. Sounds bloody great to yeah. me. Um, I, I said, I'm just going to go through some stuff. In case you're wondering, the two little switches on here, you can either set them up in the app to switch between uh, your favorite patches. You can just kind of go up and down through your favorite patches. Or the way we've got it set is that one of them turns the delay on and off and one of them turns yeah. the reverb on and off. So anyway, let's have another listen to Connie Blue Comp. <laughs> J verb. Um, you know what we might as well do, and if I turn the gain down a bit, go to channel two, get something a bit sort of you know low gain. Again, I don't know what's this we're using. It's just called this is a 1x12 blueback speaker, maybe not ideal for high gain, but we might as well have a little Here listen. There we go. Um Let's go, right, let's go in some two by twelves now. Woman tone, yes, baby. Mm. So let's, I don't know, we'll turn the treble down maybe. Now, maybe the woman tone is a good uh, time to tell you about the feature called cone cry, uh, or speaker drive as they've referred to it on here. This was a feature that they built into the emulation, which was something that they claimed that impulse responses sort of couldn't do. Yeah. And this is where, when driven very hard, on certain frequencies, certain speakers will distort effectively yeah. or cry as they call it. And they've tried to build that in. Now, I have to be honest with you, mucking around on this slightly earlier, we were it was either unbelievably subtle or inaudible. So I don't don't expect some radical thing to happen as I dial this in. But maybe if we go with woman tone, we have a sort of um bit of gain on here, yeah. but not too much gain. And then I'll just turn the, the uh, cone cry or speaker drive up and you'll have a little listen. We, we had a bit of a double track thing on then. I wasn't sure what it was. And John and Pete quite rightly said, try adjusting the room. So we did. And with a bit less room, it sort of gets rid of that double track thing. I've put the reverb on here. Let's get a sound and see if we can see what this speaker cry does. So start playing in your best Eric Clapton style. Yeah. Uh. Not that style. It's got to be more like, got to be more like full on lay low. That's it. Yeah. I literally got that wrong. It's fine. Sound. Yeah. Yeah, up, so it, lots of Clapton-y style yeah. bends. I, 
I vaguely remember that the this is going back to the two or three years when I did the original one of those, that it's it's frequency based. So it's right. certain frequencies that you hit that causes the speaker to cry. Anyway, look, there you go. I mean, it's a nice bit of Clapton playing. I'm impressed by <laughs> that. Sorry, Clapton. Um, no, it's good. Uh, let's try, we'll go back to a clean sound here. We'll go some warm jazz, um, obviously. <laughs> Quite bright for jazz. <laughs> we can make it uh, less bright. In fact, to shout. Let me let me go into the EQ then, because we've not shown this yet. Um, next to each uh, where it says microphone one and microphone two, you see this little uh, triangle arrow thing. So that opens up uh, some additional parameters here. So you can see I can adjust the level. I can pan it. I've got the low cut and the option to put the mic. Uh, on axis or off axis. And then of course I've even I've got a, a, an EQ for each microphone as well here. So we've got tons and tons of functionality if we want to dick around with it. I'm sort of I think my sort of feeling is almost that what's attractive about this whole thing is the sense that you don't need to deep dive in there. You can just yeah. assume that the clever people at Universal, like Universal Audio will have just made the best patch yeah. for you. But yeah, you said you want it. So I've gone to the master EQ. If I switch the master EQ on, mm -hmm. I can take a bit of the treble off the top. We can have a high cut. There we go, it's getting there. Bit of compression. That's nice. Jazz licks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we go back. Uh, what was I on now? I think that was, I was on 212s. Let's just skip forward. Let's find, oh, let's skip forward to find some 412s. Or well, 410. Let's do a 410 80s J chorus in a 420. Didn't know that that was a thing. Uh, you can see each time I'm changing, it's asking me if I want to save the changes I've made to the preset, which obviously I'm not, but can do. Play the White Snake intro that you played when we did our 80s video. Oh, I think I can remember that. <laughs> Come on. Something like that White Snake intro. Oh, I do remember it. Was, what was it? I uh, don't know. Something like that. <laughs> this one's for Bernie. Something, again, anyway, sorry, White Snake. Sorry I to everyone. I I'm didn't realise that the chorus was so good in this, but that's great. Yeah, it's um, really nice. Okay, <clears> we're into. Let's go over slightly dirty sounds now, um, and we'll put like a. I don't know, Greenback 30 says, carry on to Kansas. Uh, could be a reference to the band, I suppose, but here we go. Really good. Um, Again, we've got a few more to go through, but I think I'll just one last little stop about the pedal. So obviously, as you can probably see from the pedal, it's pretty simplistically laid out here. I can choose which six of these um, cabinet emulations. I can edit them, obviously. I can create my own ones, and I can ultimately choose which six I just want to be in the pedal. Yeah. So in a gig or whatever, I wouldn't have my phone uh, uh, tethered to this. I would just have the six rigs. Mm. I can, on the fly, very quickly change the type of microphone that we've got in mic one and mic two, and I can control the levels. And as you can see across the top, I've just got a simple in, output, and speaker drive. Yeah. And then again, however I um, program up the reverbs and the delays or whatever I want A, A and B to be, that'll remember that uh, per rig. So six different effects, combinations, potentially yeah. combinations of effects, yeah. That's the pedal, it's true stereo in, stereo out. Um, it is like all the UA pedals at the moment, not MIDI, but it's USB, so it might be MIDI one day, who knows? Mm -hmm. Not entirely sure this is a type of pedal you'd need to control by a MIDI. I think it sounds fabulous. Yeah. It's reassuringly UA expensive. Um, 
I mean, ox is a thousand quid. Three, a pound of 300, isn't it? Yeah. So like 380 Yeah. So I suppose in fairness, if you take the uh, attenuator out of an ox and you remove 600 quid's worth of cost, you end up with the ox stomp. So maybe yeah. it is fair, but yes, a little bit of change out of 400 quid on this. Whilst we're comparing this to Ox Stomp, of course, here's another handy way you could do this. You could get yourself a Bugera um, Power Soak, which is a, an attenuator that you could plug your valve amplifier into. And then it has a line output, which of course you would then put into the Ox Stomp. So you could build yourself like a pseudo cheap version of the Ox. Mm. Some uh, valve amplifiers do just have a line output as well. So you could, you could run that into this and then give your front of house man something. Um, but that's it. Let's just talk. Let's just play. Um, thank you very much, Mr. John. Always uh, it's a pleasure. a pleasure to see you. Thank you guys for uh, tuning in. Uh, yes, well done to UA. That's a nice little pedal. Okay. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.